Hello, everyone, and welcome to Financial Accounting. Our topic today is the accounting cycle, capturing economic events. In this video, we will cover the role of accounting records, the ledger, the use of accounts and the accounting equation, and the rules of debit and credit. Finally, we will discuss debit and credit entries and double entry accounting, and we'll look at a couple of examples. All accountants play a key role in establishing and maintaining economic information about a company. This video will illustrate how an accounting system works. Most information is stored on computers and accounting information is no exception. As accountants, we must be proficient in establishing and maintaining databases of financial information for a company. This information is used to prepare financial statements and other reports that are used by management and others. Let's first talk about the ledger. It is a group of accounts for a particular business. An account is an individual record showing increases and decreases in the balance. You might want to think of a checkbook as an account. In the checkbook, Cash receipts and disbursements are maintained in chronological order, as well as the current account balance. All general ledger accounts are maintained in a similar manner. Accountants often use a T-account to represent a general ledger account. As scary as T-accounts may sound for folks outside of accounting, they are actually very helpful and easy to use. By using T-accounts, we can quickly analyze transactions before entering information in the journal. The left side of a T-account is always called the debit side, and the right side is always called the credit side. The terminology comes from the time when the double entry system was first developed. These terms are still used as a matter of convention. Increases and decreases in an account balance are handled differently depending upon the nature of the account. Let's look at the example of a T-account for cash. Note that in accounting, cash is not just coins and banknotes. It can also be a checking or saving account. Here are the dates and the amounts of transactions that impacted the cash account of our sample company. Because cash is an asset and assets are increased by debit and decreased by credit, all receipts or increases should be placed on the debit or left side of the ledger account. If increases are placed on the left side of the account, all payments or decreases should be placed on the right or credit side of the account according to the basic accounting rules for assets. The balance in any account is the difference between total debits and credits. The balance is placed on the side with the greater dollar amount. Before looking at the rules of debit and credit, let's look at the accounting equation. Assets are equal to liabilities plus owner's equity. Note that assets are on the opposite side of the equation from liabilities and owner's equity. To review, the left side of a ledger account is always called the debit and the right side is always called the credit. Now let's move on to the mathematics of the double entry system. Liabilities and equity have the opposite sign of assets as they are on the opposite side of the equation. If liabilities were to move to the left side of the equation, it would read assets minus liabilities equal equity. As a convention of double entry accounting, it's been decided that a debit or left side of an asset account will represent an increase in the asset account balance. This convention determines all of the remaining math. Because liabilities and equity have the opposite sign of assets, a debit to a liability or equity account must mean a decrease and a credit means an increase. 
Instead of using the terms increase and decrease, we use the terms debit and credit. It is important to remember whether we are talking about an asset, liability, or equity account for the meaning of a debit or credit. It may take some time to get used to the terms debit and credit, but with some practice, I'm sure you can easily master this concept. Accountants use the double entry accounting system. This means that all transactions will have the equal dollar amount of debits and credits. Let's look at the rules of debit and credit a bit closer. As we already learned, Assets are increased by debit and decreased by credit, while liabilities and owner's equity are increased by credit and decreased by debit. But how about accounts such as revenue, expenses, owner's withdrawals or contributions? All these accounts are a part of owner's equity. Expenses and withdrawals have the opposite rules as they decrease owner's equity. We will look closer at those accounts later. Now let's take a look at a couple of examples. In the first example, we deposit 6,000 in a bank account in the name of our corporation in return for shares of stock in the corporation. Cash is an asset account and capital stock is an owner's equity account. Let's look at how this transaction is posted to the ledger accounts. Cash is an asset account and is increased by debit. Capital stock is an owner's equity account and is increased by credit. The cash account increased so $6,000 was placed on the left or debit side of the ledger account. Remember, a debit to an asset account means an increase. The capital stock account was increased or credited for $6,000. Remember, a credit to an equity account represents an increase in the account. This results in an equal debit and credit impact in this transaction. So we have followed the double entry accounting rules. In the next transaction, we borrow 10,000 from a bank. Let's see how this transaction is posted to the ledger accounts. The cash account will increase by 10,000. An increase in an asset account is shown with a debit. This amount is put on the debit or left side of the ledger account. The liability account called notes payable also increased. An increase is shown in a liability account with a credit. The 10,000 is put on the credit or right side of the ledger account. Note that the debit is equal to credit. In the next transaction, we buy land for 12,000 cash. Because we paid cash, the cash account decreased. And because we got land, the land account increased. But since both accounts are asset accounts, total assets didn't change. The land account is an asset. An increase in an asset account is shown with a debit. The cost of the land, 12,000, is placed on the debit or left side of the ledger account. The cash account will decrease by 12,000. A decrease in an asset account is shown with a credit. The payment is placed on the credit or right side of the cash ledger account. For simplicity, we show both sides of the transaction in one T account, but this transaction is posted to two separate ledger accounts. We will go over more examples and in greater detail in the next video. I will post the link here and in the description to this video as soon as it is available. Make sure to click on the notification bell so you don't miss the next video. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with anyone who might be interested in learning accounting. Next week, we're going to continue studying the accounting cycle 
and look at more examples. I will see you next week.